Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story. Banned a girl from a slide and mom got in my face and called me slurs. Okay, first, a little context. I work at a water park roughly 30 minutes away from my home. And I got my job from being friends with the director and having another friend in the business. But don't think for a second that I don't work. I'm the second hardest working person there and I've received employee of the month twice in a single year of work there. So I knew people there and people like me. I don't particularly like kids but I can handle them well enough. The water park also had two sections, the kids side and the adult side. This story takes place in the kids side of the park. All of my fellow employees hate working the play structure. It's got a slide and kids are annoying. So I decided to take it for the day, take one for the team, you know? So I was up in the play structure and my job was to send kids down the slide when it was safe for them to go. This little girl comes up to the top and wants to go down. I wait a second until I see the other kids start to get out, then turn to tell the girl she can go. But she's already halfway down the slide. She nearly hits the kid because he was slow to get out. She comes back up and I kneel down and say, Hey, that was dangerous. You could have hit that kid and both gotten hurt. Please wait for me to tell you when it's safe to go down the slide. She nodded and actually followed my instructions. But this is when she broke the rules again. At the entrance of the play structure, there is a sign that gives the rules. Wait for the worker to let you go down before going down the slide. And you are not allowed to go face first. She decided to ignore rule 2 and went down face first. And she came up again. So I knelt down again. And I said, hey, you can't go down head first, you can hurt yourself. She nodded and then went down head first again anyway. The play structure works on a three strike system. So as that was her third time breaking the rules, I had to kick her off the slide. So when she came back up and started to walk towards the slide, I stepped in her way and said, I'm sorry, you broke the rules three times so you can't go down anymore. She yelled at me and tried to push her way through, but I'm bigger and stronger than her. So she couldn't get through and went back down the stairs in a half. A solid 10 minutes pass. Then she comes back up, holding her mother's hand. Her mom says relatively calmly at first, My daughter told me you told her she couldn't go down the slide anymore. Is that true? I said that is correct, ma'am. She asked me why, so I explained that if a person breaks the rules three times, they cannot go down the slide anymore. She gets closer to me and says, Okay, I understand that, but she's four years old. And I respond with, Ma'am, it doesn't matter how old she is. She still broke the rules three times, so she can't go down the slide anymore today. And she gets even closer and says, Okay, but she's four. And I respond with, I understand, but the rules apply to big kids the same as they do for the small kids. So she can't go down anymore today, sorry. Now I'm 19 close to 20, relatively tall, not super muscular, and my parents are Japanese. I deal with severe anger issues, and based on trauma from my childhood, people being in close proximity to my face makes me incredibly uncomfortable. And this lady was maybe an inch away from my face when she started yelling at me and calling me slurs. I was so close to losing my cool. I could actually feel my face turning beet red. My hands were balled into fists and my jaw was incredibly tense. A bit more about me. I might look like a scrawny kid, but when I get angry I look like a demon. Not my words. I wasn't even doing anything and I was terrifying her daughter. In an attempt to keep my cool and to get this whale out of my face, I said ma'am, please do not call me slurs. It is uncalled for and rude. 
I'm only doing my job. And to my surprise, she actually got out of my face, scoffed and said, let's go find someone in charge. Apparently she had a day pass because I saw her later that evening talking to my manager. She looked over and saw me cleaning and I just hear, that's him. My manager, Herm, who hates me by the way, comes over to me and asks me if I assaulted this woman's daughter. I of course said I didn't, but because he's a rampant jerk head, he went to look at the cameras anyway. But not before getting the two officers who are always on the premises. The manager saw that I was right in what I did, and that I did everything according to procedure, and the officers saw her getting in my face and screaming at me. We then went over to talk to the lady. She said, well, is he in trouble or not? Herm looks at her and says, he never did anything wrong, and he never assaulted your daughter. Then he gets this strange look and asks for her day pass. At first she refuses to give it to him, then relents and gives Herm her pass. Turns out, she wasn't even supposed to be there. Her pass had expired the day before, but she just didn't leave the hotel. So I had the privilege of watching the officers escorting her to her room, waiting outside while they packed, and then escorting them out of the building. She was cussing me out the whole way out of the park, in front of her four-year-old daughter no less. Mom of the year, everyone. As we got out to her car right as she got in, I said, Thanks for coming to X Park. Feel free to never come again. With the biggest grin on my face, because that was my first Karen. At least it ended well. When I got inside, my manager told me I handled the situation very well. And I had a pretty uneventual end of the night. So please remember not to be rude to the workers, because we're often right. Next story. I scored a bitty victory over my HOA. I've named several members of the board here who were specifically nasty to me. There were a total of 8 on the other side of this table. And they were all glaring at me towards the end like I just spit in their coffee. We've got Soy Boy, who's a dude in his 50s, that clearly was getting off at this small amount of authority. Karen Prime, who made a comment about my vegetation that was unwarranted and exaggerated after I told him I plan on building a newer version of my current fence. Decrepit snake Karen who has been nice to the point of annoying over the past 18 or so months I've lived here over for me to find out it was her who has been taking pictures and originally filed a complaint. And the admin lady who I have zero problems with because she basically fed me the ammunition required to own these people. A few months back I was cited for my 6 foot privacy fence looking disorderly. It is a valid citation as the fence is 20 years old and I have wanted to fix it since the day I moved in 2 years ago. The only problem is that I'm recovering from a bankruptcy and I won't get approved for an equity loan. Or any loan really, until January of 2014. Which will be 2 years after the discharge. With a citation from earlier this summer, I replied that I was unable to pay for a new fence at this time and I asked for leniency until I could. They replied about a month later with a summons to a hearing over this issue, which happened today. In the couple of weeks I had to prepare for this, I reached out to several companies to get quotes for a fence exactly like the one I have now, so that I could present them with a realistic cost and give a plan and just sort of hope they would not find me. While I'm in a meeting telling them about these options, decrepit snake Karen says they won't approve my style of fence, 6 foot privacy, and that is the majority of the problem. It took a minute for this to sink in, what she had just said to me. And once it did, I had some questions. I asked why then, on their original citation, that I had the option to repair this fence. This is a point in which Karen Prime messed up. She tells me that the HOA in 2005 mistakenly approved the previous homeowner's request to build a privacy fence and that this HOA board would never approve such a fence. This led me to another question. Is my privacy fence grandfathered in with the decision? And they said yes. But 
How are you supposed to fix this in 60 days if you don't have the money? I told him that I really like this type of fence and I don't want to replace it with one of their options. They told me they were only approving those 3 to 4 feet tall fences that use the wire screens in between the 3 cross posts. At this point, I asked him why they are citing me in the first place when a house in our neighborhood sold for 55k over the asking price a few months back, which clearly indicated to me that no one is taking the condition of my fence into serious consideration before buying. And this really pissed off the soy boy, the lone male member of the board, who responded that we were done arguing about this and that the HOA will be taking action in 60 days by finding me $10 a day. That's about $3,600 over the year. So I'm thinking I'm just going to have to get screwed at this point. That is until the admin lady at the end of the table pipes up that the maximum fine is capped at $900. This also takes a minute to register for me because these repairs for a fence that I do not want to own will probably cost between 3 to 4k. Just realized I forgot to mention that the fence I want would cost just under 10k. At this point, I tell them that $900 is cheaper than making the requested repairs for a fence I don't want. They kind of stare at me with a bit of malice knowing that I have them by the balls. After about 7 or 8 awkward seconds, Soy Boy says that the board will find me accordingly in 60 days if I don't take action by then. And then I was dismissed. The admin lady pipes up again that they actually have to vote on this decision real quick. Karen Prime seconds Soy Boy's motion to make that decision. They vote unanimously and I leave smug as hell knowing that they will have to look at my fence for another year and some change. And then watch as I build another 6 foot privacy fence when I'm eligible for an equity loan. Next story. Try taking my hearing aid. Get arrested. So this happened just last year and I just needed to tell people. So I'm in my freshman year and I go to a pretty good public high school. So we're taking our end of first semester exam and during this our teacher had a family emergency and had to leave. I was sitting in a classroom when the sub came in and everything was going too well until this sub noticed my hearing aid. I noticed that he was walking towards me but thought nothing of it. But this dude literally grabbed my hearing aid and yanked it out of my ear. My hearing aid is one that has a small plastic tub going into the ear canal. I only have one due to a surgery to fix my hearing loss. He started yelling at me. And I had no clue what he was saying because I have really bad hearing loss and my ears were also hurting. He noticed that I was not listening to him. So he tries to hit me. But that's when about three of my classmates tried to get him away from me and two other people grabbed my hearing aid that are now on the floor and they grab my arm and take me to a classroom three doors down and they just barge in with me crying. I have some past issues that I don't want to mention. I did hear what they said but all I know is that the teacher got on the phone and one of them was helping me get my hearing aid back in. They ended up taking me to the office where we were put in a room with couches. I was never told what happened in the classroom but I do know that this sub ended up with a black eye and a broken tooth. The next time I saw this sub was when my big brother picked me up in his patrol car and he was in the back of a police car. The outcome. He lost his teaching license. I was told by the principal that he should lose it due to basically assaulting a student and I heard rumors that he was put in jail. I was fine at the end of the day and I got exempted from the exam. I ended up becoming friends with the people who helped me and there ended up being a teacher meeting or something explaining how to treat someone who has a disability and how to help. I still don't know the reason why he grabbed my hearing aids instead of just asking me to take them out and I would have explained that I am deaf and need them to hear. I do not really want to know the reason and I don't want to see him ever again. Next story. Entitled roommate's dog bites me. 
I recently got into some conflict with a roommate after her dog attacked me. It was a large breed and left some pretty gnarly wounds but I'm okay. The night it happened I told her that she cannot bring the dog back into my house because he's now a liability with my homeowner's insurance. She even went as far as to try to sneak it back in behind my back. I was already planning on getting a doorbell security camera due to the recent increase in violent crimes in our area. It came in the mail today and I set it up and put it on the floor. My roommate has been gone for a week and came back tonight and she demands that I remove the camera because I'm not allowed to record her and she has a right to privacy. The camera is a ring doorbell camera that only records what happens outside the front door. She is now accusing me of being psycho and is calling the police. I told her when the cops came to get her dog after I was attacked that they actually recommended the exact thing to ensure the animal isn't brought back after being released. Edit. The dog bite was reported to the police. The night it happened, they sat her down and explained the severity of this issue, took the dog and gave her a citation for the dog not being licensed and no proof of vaccination. The dog is officially surrendered and is actually going to a new home in 30 days with a great new owner. The police came when she called and said she was wasting their time. I was within my legal rights and said that I was even being too nice because I give her access to see the footage but can never tamper with it. I am the homeowner. She's on a yearly lease. Eviction is something that I'm currently considering. She has been notified her lease will not be renewed with an official date to be out once it expires. She's on a list to not be able to adopt from shelters and flagged. Medical attention was received for the bite and the dog was tested slash quarantined. I'm actually fully healed and it didn't even scar my tattoo. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.